You see this stuff, bacteria, fungus, and athlete's foot, it's all over your house. Okay, when you order your kit from Amazon, this is what you get. You get a box that looks just like that. It has 10 petri dishes that have agar already mixed up in them. And this is uh, this agar is a gelatin-like substance that's used to grow bacteria. So what we're gonna do is give each one of my volunteers here one of these cotton swabs, and they're gonna swab some part of their body, and they're gonna rub it on the petri dish, and then we're gonna put these in an incubator for seven to 10 days, and we're gonna see what sort of bacteria grows on it. So let's get started. We're gonna give everybody a, co a uh, cotton swab. You can swab whatever you want to. So what are you gonna do, David? I think I'll do my hands. No? Right? Cause I wash my hands. I just wash mine. Your fingernails. I'll probably do it like under my fingernails. All right. I'm working. I'll wash it better then. <laughs> yeah, you gotta rub it under your fingernail. It doesn't have to have anything on it for the bacteria. As close as you can. This one got the most grease. I just stick your finger in there to it. Airplane grease and all that stuff on it. If you want to rub it on your agar nail, rub it in a couple of different places. And just you do don't have to rub it real hard. You're not trying to break the surface of the agar. You just want to make sure you get a, you, you get the, um, the sample smeared around really good. All right. You're good. Let's see what. I. It's kind of weird. I'm gonna swab my nose right here. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do my Apple Watch. It's probably so gross. I don't even think I want to see what's on this. Right now. Okay, who's next? I'm next. So I'm gonna roll it on the home button of my phone and then the off button. And now I'm gonna roll on the agar. Seal it up. Now notice, everybody's got a post-it note so they, we know who sampled it or which uh, agar dish belongs to each person. All right. So now, what do y'all want me to do? What do you want me to swab? You, no, you, guys, your mouse. you guys get to pick what I swab. Your computer mouse. Your mouse. Swab, the, swab the mouse really good. Now, I want to make a point here. You can't see anything on the surface of my mouse, but I promise you there's bacteria. There's probably staph bacteria on here. There may be um, strep. There's bacteria all over the mouse. It's, uh, of course, it's too small to see, but um, bacteria is everywhere. You can't get away from it. It's on any surface, and no, no matter how many times you sterilize the surface with uh, Clorox wipes or Lysol, there's still going to be bacteria on it. It's, uh, it's everywhere. All right, so make sure you can see this. This is how we do this. You put your Q-tip on and you just gently roll it around on the agar tray. Make sure that every part of the Q-tip touches the agar. So I'm gonna make two stripes. I made a stripe on that side. I'm gonna make another stripe on this other side. And when you do this, if you, if you uh, order this kit and do it, you don't have to jab your your q-tip into the agar you just have to make contact just and that and the reason you roll it is so that you don't tear up your your agar in your tray you don't really want to disturb the surface too much you just want to make sure you have good contact all right so i'm going to seal my tray and then uh, we have a couple of more folks that are going to do theirs and um tomorrow and then we're going to put them all into an incubator and we're going to see who has the most bacteria? So tell me, who do you think is going to have the dirtiest sample? Me, Patrick. Sebum can get very oily and dirty. You? Sebum is the oil on your face, by the way, just for reference. Who's going to have the dirtiest sample? My one? Apple Watch, my phone, or David's fingernails. I think it's going to be my fingernails because I work with a lot of equipment all day. Let's like see your fingernails. fingernails. And this is after I've, cl I've cleaned it like three or four times. Like that, that's. Today? Yeah. yeah. It doesn't come out. Like, and that's just from like, the plane, the uh, 
like the big equipment we use, tools, toolboxes, other people, doorknobs, hanger doors, whatever you're touching all day, like it gets dirty. So I feel like I use solvents and a whole bunch of other chemicals today too. So. Really? Yeah. I'm going to make a prediction. I'm going to predict that his telephone is going to be the dirtiest thing that we swab. Now, um, we're also going to swab a couple other things. We're going to swab um, a toilet seat. That's the thing people most often ask about. And uh, what else? We need one more sample. Dog's mouth. And the dog's mouth. We're going to swab the dog's mouth too. Where is the dog? Jacks. <laughs> he's dead. Dead. He disappeared. I think he's trying to hide from us. We're going to swab the dog's cheeks too. And he we're going to see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to see what's going to happen. So uh, we'll see how the results go. We'll be back. Most people think that when you buy medicine, you're getting something that's completely sanitized or as clean as it can be. So we're gonna take a pill out of this Benadryl package and we're gonna put that pill in this agar tray and we're gonna wait until all of our samples are cultured for about seven days, may, it may take up to 10 days. We're gonna see what sort of bacteria grows just from the pill inside this package. All right, so first let's cut open the package. And I want to just put one single pill inside this tray. Just like that. There it is. So we're going to leave it in here and see what grows off that one pill. So what I've done with the rest of our samples is sealed them up with electrical tape to make sure mostly it's not to keep them airtight. Mostly it's to make sure that nobody can take the top off and look at it. So here's how it works. You just take the electrical tape, Take your Petri dish and seal it up good with the electrical tape. Cut it off. There you go. All right, so we'll be back in about a week and a half. I want to make one more point about sealing up these trays. Um, as I said earlier, I didn't do it just to make sure the trays are airtight. I don't want people, uh, mostly teenagers, coming along, opening the top and rubbing their finger around in there and, and contaminating it even more because we're trying to get a good uh, solid sample. There's another thing to think about here. Um, bacteria is in the air all around us. It's on everything you touch. No matter how many Clorox wipes or how much Lysol you use, you can't get away from it. But when you let this sample grow for seven to ten days you could potentially have a lethal dose of something like staph or strep or some other noxious bacteria something that could really do you some damage so i want these trays sealed so that some of the kids can't come along especially the younger kids and um and look at it or sniff it or get up close to it so uh they're they're all sealed really good so we'll be back in a few days and see what we have So this is our incubator. So when you grow bacteria, you have to ha keep it warm. Ideally, it needs to be between 85 and about 105 degrees. Um, so yeah, Fahrenheit, not Celsius. So I took this box and we put a light bulb on the inside of the box. And that light bulb makes just enough heat to make the bac bacteria grow. Notice I'm wearing gloves. After you culture this for about a week or grow it for about a week, you don't want to touch it with, with, uh, with um, naked, naked hands <laughs> because you could have a lethal dose of something. So let's take a look at it. All right, first one is Kalen. Knife. We're going to cut the tape. We're going to get this going underneath the sticky knot. This Keep tape going. is difficult to cut. Be careful. Okay, so. Uh, Let me see that. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a better image of it. Ew. <laughs> All right. It looks like spores. Kaylin, what did you uh, swab? My Apple Watch. So that is what's grown on your Apple Watch in the last I'm week. Get a little bit. All right. Oh, that's, that's nasty. Wild. So now let's do the next one. Who is this? All right. This is the dog's mouth. See? <laughs> Dog. Oh, yeah. So if the dog's mouth is cleaner than your Apple Watch, we got some problems. It probably is. I'm pretty sure it is. All right. <laughs> Let's, uh, take this off. I think I'm going to take this off. <laughs> and 
<laughs> it is cleaner. It is cleaner. There we go. Whoa! Well, Dad, be careful. All right, see it? That came out. That's the culture from the dog's mouth. Now, it also <laughs> smells pretty bad. Yeah. All right. For you to get the flu or okay, something. Yeah, this the one eye. is David's. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, let's see. What did you, you do? So, I did. If yours is lay it under my fingernail. Oh. Yeah. After, like, if yours is first. That looks like David's. <laughs> As an aircraft mechanic, it should be. Oh, it should, should be the cleanest. It should be the cleanest. All right, David's got some bed. really nasty stuff. Yours is worse, Caitlin. Uh, she could have there you go, David. She has the leaf Remember, don't touch it. Her shoes was the worst. All right, this is my mouse. All right, so let's see. Oh, this. Uh, let's see what was on my mama. mouse. Mama. All right. Don't That's look your like your computer mouse? Yeah. Ooh, this one's gonna be bad. Dad. Wow. That's, That's actually not that bad. That, but look how like thick it is, like compared to like the other ones. Hold up my eye level, Dad. Hold it to my yeah, eye level. Like, like after all. <laughs> yeah, it goes down it's in there. Be yeah, it's see it? Can I uh, swap today? Yeah, let's finish this first. So I, okay. all right, so the next one is Patrick. How did I know? What did you swap, Patrick? My phone and my Apple Watch. Well, you scrub, you scrub like the uh, the power button and the home button or something. Right? Yeah, they like the um, the thing turned off and on, like the volume button and the screen. Dad, be careful with my stop us. He's got safety gloves on. All right, so Patrick's <laughs> surprisingly clean. No, it's not. You can't tell it, but there's bacteria Ooh, growing I all around it. the edges yeah. of the dish. Oh my god. Dude. Yours is the worst, actually. No, it's it's not. I don't know. I don't know. Kalen's is pretty bad. bad. <laughs> Kayla's is pretty bad. The next one is uh. Holly Oil off of my face. Oil off of Holly's it's face. Sebum. It's called what? Scientific term is sebum. Scientific term is sebum. Teacher skin doctor. Sebum. Oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> it is oil. That's why you need to wash your face I every day. I wash my face twice a day, thank you. See? It's still, it's like, but it's not as like thick or as like, yeah, I guess dense that's or what happens compared if you to don't like wash Kaylin's. Your face. Okay, so this one I'm gonna let you look at it and you, I'm gonna let everybody guess what it is. Okay. Ooh. I think I already know what that one is. Me too. Is it something that we swabbed all together? I mean, no. Mm -hmm. Is that a TV remote? Yeah. Alright, so let's let's get a good good image of it on the camera. Ooh, it's like yellow. Yummy. Nah. Yeah, okay. I don't That's know about a, that. Is that a TV remote? Oh, that one actually has a smell. That one has a smell. What do you think it is? <laughs> that one has a smell. Alright, what do you think it is, Kaylin? I think it is. I don't know. Is it Miss Angie's phone? What do you think it is? I'm going to say a TV remote. I don't know. Patrick? Mom's phone has a TV remote. I feel like you did something. Maybe? I feel like you did something in the kitchen. Okay. I don't know why I'm getting that, like, mm. the fridge handles. No, this is actually from a toilet seat. Oh, hey, oh, wait, 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 here's your ours, here's your ours. Yeah, here's your ours. Thank God. Okay, so <laughs> now, these next two are really interesting. All right. That's a Benadryl tablet. I want to get on camera when I talk about this. All right. So, what's something that um that you buy that you think is always, always sanitized and like ultra clean? Medicine. 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 So, so for this one, I took a um, Benadryl packet that had not been opened, and I opened it, and I just dropped a Benadryl onto the tray. So we're going to see yeah, how, dirty, like. how dirty closed medicine really is. And okay, let's see out. what it looks like. And, and, it, and it broke apart. So this is really a surprise. All right. So that's, what's on, that's what comes from Benadryl. So as you can see, there's very little growth of bacteria. So you didn't break it up? No, I didn't break it up. I just Benadryl? dropped the Benadryl the in there. But we have a little bit of growth right around here. We have some growth around the edges. But overall, if you compare it to these other samples, there's just not much bacteria growth. So the Benadryl is actually pretty clean. Now, we have some, we have some bacteria around the edges. I'm going to have to take some time and identify that. I don't know what it is, but it's... um. 
There's something there, so we know the Benadryl is not completely sanitized. How do you plan on All right, for the last there? one, for the last one, I did a surprise. One of the things that everybody thinks is completely sanitized is a Band-Aid. So when you put a Band-Aid on your hand, you think that Band-Aid is going to be clean. So I took a Band-Aid and I put it on one of our last Petri dishes. And let's see what we have here. If this is not wow. sick, I'm just going all wild and not wearing a Band-Aid. Okay, so the Band-Aid, if you, I don't know if you can see it, the band-aid was sitting right here under my thumb and so there's some sort of growth there i don't know what it is see mm. but that bright yellow bacteria has grown around the outside of the dish so band-aids are actually pretty clean however however there are there is some bacteria growth around here so now that could have come from the air or it could have come from the wrapper so i, I want to say something about all these so here's one thing that a lot of people don't think about when you do something like this. Um, we think that all this bacteria comes from whatever we touched to the agar, okay? But what we're doing is making the assumption that the agar is completely sanitized, that, it, that it's germ-free when we get it. We don't know that. I contacted the company that produces these, and the dishes come from China and the dishes are sanitized and they're irradiated to kill any bacteria that's on the dish. And then they mix the agar up in Pennsylvania and they put the agar in the dish. They package it up and they ship it to California. It goes to San Diego where it's um, separated into the packages that you buy when you purchase it from Amazon. So the agar comes from, the agar itself comes from uh, Maine. It's made in Maine. So you have a supply line from Maine to Pennsylvania to San Diego to our house. And, and there's something to think about. This bacteria has been growing for a week now, okay? And, it, and I've had it in a fairly warm environment, but the whole time that it was in transit from, from all those places, from Maine to Pennsylvania to San Diego to our house, it was in a, in a truck most of the time, a UPS truck, FedEx truck, some sort of truck where the temperature was very warm, where the bacteria had the opportunity to grow, but it didn't. It didn't really take off and start growing until we brought it into our environment and we, we touched, our, um, touched our samples to the agar and then put it in this uh, incubator for a week. So that tells me the agar probably was um, very clean, uh, mostly sanitized. And after we opened it and touched our samples, then it really started growing. So, everybody look and tell me which one you think is the worst one here. Kaylin. And don't touch, just look, don't touch them. The one inside Kaylin's. Kaylin's, Kaylin's. definitely. Okay, was this Kaylin's right here? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. the toilet right. seat one. <laughs> okay, so you get the nasty award. You're the dirtiest person here. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I got it. Until we see Kaylin. Yeah. So, the, clean, the cleanest one, I'm really surprised is um is actually the one with the benadryl the 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 sample with the benadryl had less bacterial growth than the sample that i put the band-aid in and that one's got some nice bright orange bacteria okay tonight i want to take some pictures of all of our petri dishes with our bacteria and fungus in it and you'll notice we're in the garage and the reason we're in the garage is the Petri dishes smell so bad we could not keep them in the house any longer. So let me show you what I did to try and control the smell before I brought them outside. This is our incubator box. I took all the Petri dishes, put them into a shoe box inside the incubator box, just like that. And even though they were contained in the shoe box, they still smelled horrible. Um, They've been growing now for about uh, two and a half weeks. When we were, last time we were inside with the kids, at that time they had about a one week of growth. And uh, what I found out is that in about two weeks and three days, the agar started to solidify. It dried up. Even though they were sealed in the Petri dishes, it still dried up. But we still have a lot of growth. Um, to try and get images, one of the first things I did was to use this telescope, and I'm sorry, a microscope, and that's a decent microscope um, to take pictures. And, and if you look with it, look through it with your eye, it looks great. You, get, you can see uh, the bacteria and fungus up close, but I cannot focus the camera through the eyepiece on the microscope. 
So I'm gonna do a follow-up video. I actually ordered a camera that plugs into this eyepiece, and I'm gonna do a follow-up video probably in a couple of weeks when the eyepiece comes in. I'm gonna grow some more cultures you know, and show you what it looks like at the really, really close level. What I'm doing tonight is to take some pictures in uh, macro mode with uh, my Nikon camera, get really up close pictures with it. They're not gonna be superb, but they're gonna be good enough where you can actually see some detail. So on my camera, I've put a macro lens and I've put an additional lens on the end of the camera to help focus. I've got it in macro mode and I've got my f-stop set that, so that we can capture, um, capture a really good image. So here's how this works. I've got this light set up and this light puts this, uh, this light puts light 360 degrees all around the dish. And that dish that we have there is, um, it's actually the sample from Kalen's uh, Apple Watch. So it's pretty nasty. So let's see if I can adjust the camera and get you down here where you can see what I'm doing. So I'm holding the camera, the Nikon, straight over it like that. And um, I'll pick the best picture of each one and put it in the video so you can get a really good look at it. All right, so once you take a picture, that's what it looks like. And uh, I'll pick the best picture and then we'll put the best pictures in the video so you can really, you can get a good idea of, um, of what it looks like and we'll be back. Okay, I want to say a couple of comments to wrap this up. Um, first off, we had intended to have all of our bacteria and fungus samples professionally identified. However, because of the COVID virus, nobody, no, no facility wants anyone to bring outside pathogens in, and we completely understand that. So we're gonna try that again later. We found some great resources online to identify the bacteria. We're gonna put that in the description of the video so you can see it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, you know, a couple of people have asked me if it's that easy to grow bacteria and fungus, why don't we see it everywhere? Well, the reason is bacteria and fungus and other pathogens, they react to stressors in their environment just like people do. Um, pH, temperature, just the friction of rubbing your fingers together, that's all enough to kill most bacteria. But the best defense you have is to actually wash your hands, wash your face, brush your teeth keep your place clean. Um, I said in the video that you could wipe forever with Clorox wipes and not get rid of all the bacteria. And that's true, but you should still make an attempt to be as clean as you can, especially in light of what we've gone through in 2020. So anyhow, in about two weeks, we're gonna do a follow-up video. We're gonna take some really good microscopic images of some more bacteria and fungus that we're gonna grow. We're gonna try and do a better job of identifying it. And I hope you guys will tune back in and watch them. Everybody take care. Be well.